It's time to engage your brain as we dive into some deceptively complex games. If you insist. We all know what complex games usually look like, from the sprawling strategy in Civilization VI to high-level raiding in Final Fantasy XIV. We've been taught that depth comes with a million buttons, screens of endless stats, and considerable head-scratching. But it doesn't always have to be this way. Some games don't flaunt their depth, others are overtly accessible while concealing a tactical underbelly, and a few snare you with cutesy graphics that belie their true breadth. We've collected a group of games that will engage your intellect, but don't, at first, seem terribly complex. These games are deceptively deep. We'll tell you what isn't deep, though, hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video from us. Go ahead, try it. What could be more mindlessly relaxing than slowly slatting together gorgeous pastoral scenes in Dorf Romantic? At first glance, this year's gorgeous, hex-based hit is little more than a relaxation tool for farm fanciers. But look a little closer, and you'll see there's more to this game than meets the eye. Dorf Romantic's premise is simple. Place tiles to create villages, fields, waterways, railroads, and forests until you don't have any more tiles and the game is over. Along the way, players are given missions to expand a continuous series of tiles. For instance, add 32 or more houses to this village, or 400 trees to this forest. Completing these missions grants players more tiles, allowing them to keep building and earn a higher score. It sounds easy, but after a couple of games, it quickly becomes apparent that town planning is everything. You've always got to be thinking about your current missions, and those yet to come. It's a subtle but incredibly engaging game of strategy that will insist that you try just once more for that high score. So remember, check that hex before it wrecks your specs. Supergiant's inexplicably sexy hack and slash roguelike still has us in the palm of its hand. There's a reason this title has won a veritable pantheon of Game of the Year awards. It's as sweet as ambrosia and as deep as the pits of Tartarus. On its surface, Hades' concept is straightforward. You must wander the underworld as Zagreus, smashing up mythic monsters until you escape the grasp of your eponymous father. Like other roguelikes, with each run, players hope to plow further through the layers of hell. But even small mistakes can nix your chances, as when you die, you must start all over again. It's here that the godlike genius of Hades becomes clear. The game leans a full tilt into the roguelike format, integrating refreshing and complex mechanics into the cycle of life and death. Hades' enormous array of weapons, boons, upgrades, and permanent buffs also provide a delightfully varied experience with each escape attempt. It's an intoxicating mix that will keep you coming back us for more. There's a good boy. At first glance, Stardew is pixel pretty, but could be mistaken for just another farming sim. Dig, plant, harvest, repeat. But this game's roots run far, far deeper than that. Stardew is a delightfully layered onion. At once, it's a farming game, dating sim, dungeon crawler, exploration game, management sim, and super light RPG. It's not that any individual part of the game is especially complex, but that the whole game is a beautifully integrated pastoral masterpiece. In addition to creating a fully functioning farm, players can explore the town and cultivate friendships and romantic relationships. Then there's the mines, of which there are dozens and dozens of levels to explore, which are chock full of enemies and valuable resources. And beyond that, there are weird and wonderful places to explore. It's even got a wizard's tower. As if that wasn't enough, Stardew now supports co-op play, so you can pig out on its excellent mechanics with a friend. 
Mecha, no mistake. This game will push your brain to its limit, even though, just like chess, Into the Breach has a basic premise. Players take control of three mechs and send them into battle against the Vec, giant monsters hellbent on destroying humanity. Mechs and the Vec take turns to move, attack, and complete special actions. In addition to destroying the incoming threat, players must also try to safeguard as many structures as possible. The result is a strategy titan, especially when new dastardly units and increasingly desperate odds are stacked against you. You have to think two, three, or even four steps ahead should you want to beat back the invasion. Some enemies explode when they die, others paralyze you, displace you, or plain old vaporize you in one hit. It's a many-layered cake made even more appetizing by the addition of different playable mech squads, all with their own playstyles and special abilities. So don't be a gundam idiot. Pick up Into the Breach and find the Optimus solution to the Vec threat. If you're a fan of card games, roguelikes, and JRPGs, then we can't recommend Slay the Spire enough. But what exactly is this neatly packaged diamond in the rough? Well, we're glad you asked. Slay the Spire is a deck builder where players take on the role of the champion, wait for it, ascending an enormous spire. Along the way, you'll battle horrific monsters, collect cards to pad out your abilities, and acquire relics that provide unique benefits. Oh, and if you die, it's back to the base of the tower for you. But what makes it so devilishly good? Each ascent of the tower is procedurally generated, so no two runs will ever be the same. There's also the bedazzling 350 available cards to try, and 200 items, all of which keep Slay the Spire feeling fresh no matter how many times the Spire has slain you. You'll find yourself searching for that perfect deck that has thus far eluded you, or the armor-cracking wombo combo card pairing that leaves your enemies in pieces. There's a huge amount of replayability here. Add that to the game's devilish difficulty, and you've got a scintillating mix which will keep you climbing till the early hours. This next title has tactics in the name, because Riot's entry into the auto chess genre isn't exactly trying to hide its depth credentials. With that said, it's easy to underestimate how complex TFT really is. After all, League of Legends is, notoriously, one of the most intimidating games in the world to learn, and TFT is meant to be its cuddlier, more approachable cousin. Like other auto chess games, Teamfight Tactics is easy to play. Players fight one another in continuous 1v1 rounds, where all units are placed, hopefully with a degree of thought, on a hex-based board. And then they auto-battle without human intervention until one side wipes out the other. In Teamfight Tactics, there are tons of factors players have to balance. Having sets of units can grant powerful bonuses, items can boost your unit's stats or abilities, and units can also be upgraded if you buy the same one enough times. And then there's placement. How you choose to arrange your little army is the key to victory. Each of these competing interests have to be taken into account. Should you try to upgrade that two-star Tristana, or should you ditch her and wait on bagging Aphelios instead? Where's best to place your brawlers and squishies to keep them alive the longest? It's a never-ending set of tactical choices. It's these constant conundrums that keep us coming back for more. Plus, Riot is constantly changing up the units and set bonuses to keep the experience fresh, so you'll never get bored of a stale meta. As you've probably guessed from the name, this puzzle game is a mashup of Bridge Constructor and Portal, and it's here to mess with you constantly. It's a simple premise that manages to consistently apply more and more deadly neurotoxin to your synapses, as any good aperture laboratory should. There's the usual anti-upping as the game adds more and more elements into the equation. You start with boring old bridges, then comes the deadly acid, laser beams, 
trapdoors, and awfully chatty turrets. This is to be expected. Any puzzle game should challenge players more as the experience goes on. What's unexpected is the sheer volume of different engineering solutions that fit any given problem. Yes, most rooms are generally configured with a primary solution in mind, but you can always find more cost-efficient or elegant answers to the problem at hand. Then there's the added and optional challenge of getting a whole train of carts across the map, and what works for one minion might not work for a whole parade of minions. Oh, come on, that's just… <sighs> And that's a wrap on our list of deceptively deep games. We hope that you found something here to test your tactical metal that doesn't come in an overwhelming package. Let us know which game you'll be diving into first and make sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video from us.